Let me introduce uh, Chancellor Strom. He would like to uh, give you an update on, uh, well, he'll tell you what he'll update you on. <laughs> So th th thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, just as a heads up, there's three other sites connected. Um, so it's Scotch Plains, um, Piscataway, and Stratford. So, so there are multiple other sites. They are hopefully all seeing the um, uh, video screen. Um, so that's why you're not seeing them, um, so, that, so they can see the screen there. Um, the purpose of today's session, this is the second of two town halls to talk, talk about the evaluation implementation for RBHS faculty. Um, the first of them was held last week. It, was pre uh, it is now or will be shortly on the, uh, posted on the web for people who can't, couldn't make it. So this one as well will be up on the web for people who can't make it. Because of that, we ask that people hold their questions because it's not practical to get permissions from everybody who'll ask the question. Um, um, so we will record the talks as they go on and then stop the recording with, during questions uh, after it. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, getting consents from, from, from people accordingly. Um, at the session in New Brunswick, which uh, Jeff Carson gave, um, we had present two people there, three people there, um, who I wanted to emphasize uh, to you what happened and, and offer the same thing up here uh, if people want. Uh, basically, Karen Stubis was there. She runs uh, labor negotiations for uh, Rutgers. Um, uh, Elizabeth DeCap... Kasparis. De Kasparis, thank you. Um, I was there. She's the executive director of the union. Uh, and Steve Mormon is there, who is president of the union. And, and they were deliberately there to talk together, specifically to talk about their the new tone and the new partnership going, going forward. And in fact, Steve Mormon uh, then put something on the union webpage about it. Um, there are, I'm, I'm happy to say there is a, they have gone to small group sessions, uh, which is what happens when you're very serious about negotiations. Um, and uh, the, the goal is to have a contract before the end of the semester. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't come today, but they offered that they would come up together to Newark anytime people would want to have a similar session and similar discussion here. So we, we, we have moved to a new uh, constructive set of discussions from, a, uh, from a, a, a negotiating point of view. And again, you know, they've certainly seen all this. The union has vetted this completely. They've seen it for weeks and weeks. Um, and and the, the, um, I'm, I'm happy to say the, new, the, the negotiations are actively underway. Lots of meetings scheduled over the next few weeks um, with, with, again, both, both parties seeking um, to, to hopefully have something finalized before the end of the semester. So, you know, the, whether it happens or not, obviously that's a process that has to go through, but that's certainly the, the, the goal on both sides' part, and both sides are happy with the way things are going. Um, so with that, let me turn it over to Bob to describe the, the evaluation. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I, the, one of the main reasons we want to discuss, I guess we start the recording. One of the main reasons we like to discuss evaluations is because it's one of the tools that we have for faculty development. Our faculty are in need of, of guidance, of, of mentoring, of feedback, and this is an excellent, pro, an excellent way to not only provide feedback, but to also provide mentoring and, and develop them and, and, and guide them towards where they need to go to succeed. So uh, the slides uh, address the, the union negotiated uh, uh, AUP and a negotiated evaluation process that's been in place since 1994. It's a good set of guidelines. If properly applied, it really is uh, very effective. They represent the processes currently in effect, as I said, for UMDNJ schools and faculty represented by AUP. Faculty represented by other unions have different processes, and if any of you are in those unions, it is very good for you to be here to see how the AUP evaluation process uh, is uh, implemented and, and, and uh, also learn from the criteria that are being applied for faculty, which are being applied RBHS-wide. These guidelines are excellent. They really, if applied properly, they really do provide the proper feedback and guidance to faculty of what they need to do to succeed. However, we've had complaints that the evaluations are being applied inconsistently. And, and, and because of that, faculty have also complained that the criteria for evaluation and promotion 
are not clear. So the goal of this presentation and presentations that we've had at, uh, on, the, on the New Brunswick campus uh, is to correct these shortfalls and better implement the existing evaluation processes and describe the criteria that are being applied across both tracks and, and, and faculty who have different focus of attention in their endeavors. As I said, uh, these criteria are, these, these uh, processes are present on the website, the AUP website. It's uh, uh, entitled Summary of Steps in Conducting a Faculty Performance Evaluation um, in all the schools. And the quotation marks are taken directly from this document. And it says, the evaluation of faculty performance is one of the most important functions of department chairs, division directors, and other evaluators. And there's no arguing with that. They are critically important as they impact decisions on promotion, renewal, and duration of renewals. This is also true. They're required by the AAUP, ABMS, and J contracts and university policy. The overall procedure shall follow those described in the summary of steps of conducting a faculty performance evaluation on the website. So if we follow these steps, we will be far ahead of where we were if we hadn't been. And the, the document quotes, when done properly, the performance evaluation process should be an effective means to improve performance, to motivate faculty members to reach higher levels of achievement, to communicate expectations and deal with performance-related problems, and also provides a yearly opportunity to agree upon weightings of areas of responsibility and goals and objectives for the next evaluation period. I'll repeat this sentence about six or seven times in this document because this is so important laying out to the faculty member, what are you planning on doing next year? What, what drives you? What are your hopes? What you wish to accomplish? How do you wish to divide your time? How the department needs you to, to divide your time? Laying it out ahead of time so there no, there's no ambiguity. It is incumbent among the evaluators in this process, however, to be both fair and constructive. And a good evaluation is both fair and constructive. Because if evaluations are too harsh, they can result in unproductive and a demotivated faculty member. However, if they are too generous, they can lead to complacency and lack of progress. So they have to be just right, sort of mama bear-like. Evaluations must contain sufficient written commentary to explain the assigned ratings, particularly if there's an unsatisfactory rating or if improvement is needed. Again, these are quotes directly from the evaluation document as exists, as needs to be applied. So the document continues to quote, faculty members submit the following documents to the chair, division chief, or other designated evaluator. The chair may designate, and I'll point that out uh, later. They need to present an updated CV, a self-evaluation, and your proposed goals and objectives for next year and for a career. Also submit the faculty after uh, uh, the faculty uh, effort report annual effort work for the prior year where it's ap applicable. For faculty who are resident members of institutes, the institute director will collaborate with the chairs, but the chairs will have primary responsibility. So we have <laughs> issues like that in, in New Brunswick primarily, but also here in, in the uh, PHRI where, where faculty members primarily reside in the institute. It's the chair's responsibility, but they can, he, can delegate it, he or she can delegate it to the institute director. All right, so the faculty evaluator completes faculty evaluation form and records the weight as a percent previously determined for each area of responsibility. Hence that prior line where you say you spend the year, you spend some time the year before allocating what is your planned allocation, uh, describing and outlining what is your planned allocation of time for the following year because now you're being evaluated on your percent uh, allocation in each area. And the areas outlined by the document are teaching, research, and scholarship, service, and patient care. These are direct quotes. The evaluator gives the proposed evaluation to the faculty member in advance of the face-to-face -face review meeting. There has to be a face-to-face -face review meeting, allowing sufficient time for the faculty member to reflect and respond. Now, this meeting is required and not optional, both from the contract and from common sense. You should meet with your faculty the chair. Should the chair or designee should meet with the faculty member face to face to discuss this in a in a in a in a, in a manner that is 
outlined here. Okay, during this face-to-face -face meeting, the evaluator and the faculty member meet to discuss the proposed evaluation. The evaluator and the faculty member agree upon weightings of areas of responsibility and goals and objectives for the next evaluation period. So after you're done with the evaluation, again, you outline what's expected of you the following year. The establishment of goals and objectives, again in quotes, and consultation with the faculty member regarding those goals and objectives are very important aspects of the evaluation and are not optional. This is something we do. This is how we guide our junior people. The faculty member should be strongly encouraged to write comments on or attached to the faculty evaluation form, particularly in response to negative aspects and our overall unsatisfactory rating, which is appealable under the current UND and JAUP agreement. Faculty member must sign the evaluation, which indicates only that he or she has reviewed the evaluation. It doesn't mean agreement, it just acknowledges that the evaluation has taken place and they received a copy of it. And it's stated here, faculty member signature does not signify agreement with the evaluation. That's clear. All right. So the, the, the current contract has two tracks. It, it specifies tenure track and non-tenure track. And this is the February 4th, 2004 summary of, of steps in conducting a faculty performance evaluation for all these schools. A faculty provides separate sections for the four general areas of responsibility for faculty members. We all know this, we've grown up with this. It's teaching, research and scholarship, service and patient care. The relative importance of the responsibilities in each of the four evaluation areas and a weight reflecting that relative importance for each area should have been established last year in discussions with the faculty member. Hence, that same theme comes up again and again. Meet with the chair, you outline what you want to do next year, what the department needs for you to do. You come to a consensus because you have to fit. You have to do what you like, you have to do what the department needs. It's outlined for the following year. If uh, the weight should add up to 100, if the faculty member has no responsibility in a given area, the weighting is zero. For example, basic scientists who have no clinical duties, that area is zero, and so the rest of the duties add up to 100%, the other three areas. During the prior year, the faculty member and the evaluator agree upon weightings of areas of responsibility and goals and objectives for the next evaluation period. I think this is number seven that I've stated this. That's how important it is. Uh, the two tracks, the, 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 the goals and objectives for tenure track are research. It's a research focus. The focus of the faculty member is investigation, whether basic, clinical, or other fields. There are many fields. We don't uh, dictate what it should be. Uh, we simply gave two examples, but it could be many others. It could be chemistry. It could be uh, uh, a field work, it could be epidemiology, anything that has to do with biomedical science related to mathematical science. On the non-tenure track, there are, two, uh, there are four areas, there are focus areas that people participate in. There's a teaching focus, there are faculty who have a mixed focus or hybrid focus, and I will go into these later. Um, there's a clinical care focus, we are pure clinicians, and there's a research focus, uh, coterminous, for people who typically run labs or core facilities, and their primary duties are to conduct research under a source of funding that's identified that's not from our BHS. The productivity, quality, and overall performance and the achievement of the previous year's goals and objectives should be considered specifically, says the document. Each one of these items should be considered specifically and be, you should be evaluated on each one of these areas in which you partake. The overall evaluation, however, need not be an average of the weighted average of the, or, or a weighted average of the individual evaluation areas. It's more of how do you do overall. It's, it's, not, it's not a numerical average. The evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate to career focus and stage. And I, I mentioned this, and I'll mention in the next five slides because we will, I'll be presenting the criteria on which faculty are to be evaluated, but these are aspirational criteria. The criteria we lay out for all the, the, two, the, the two tracks of the foci within the non-tenure track are aspirational criteria, criteria that you should achieve at the pinnacle of your career. And obviously, you're evaluated on a, on a particular stage 
in your career, so you shouldn't be expected to perform what a full professor does if you're a starting assistant professor, for example. So here's the tenure track. These are the criteria that we should be evaluating people or people should be evaluated on the tenure track. The primary focus on the tenure track is research excellence. The faculty member needs to lead a research program with national and international recognition for their area of work, whether it's basic, clinical, biophysical, chemical, uh, population-based, epidemiology, doesn't matter where you're leading a program, you're known for that program. You are the main thought leader that developed this area of thinking for which you are recognized. They need to lead research with significant impact in the field. Lead, that's the optimal, that, that's the operative word here. They have to lead substantial and sustained peer-reviewed research grants and or contracts. Substantial and sustained and peer-reviewed. They should have published impactful peer-reviewed papers, some as first or senior author. Impactful is the operative word here. And that's testified to by people in the field. Um, they should have um, been invited to give lectures nationally and internationally. And they should play re leadership roles in professional groups, editorial activities, consultative positions. In addition, they have to demonstrate teaching excellence. Every track you have to demonstrate, and every focus within the non-tenure track, you have to demonstrate teaching excellence. Teaching is very important. This is a school, and so we all teach. We have to be good at it. If you're licensed to deliver healthcare, you have to demonstrate excellence in healthcare delivery, if, if it's applicable. And we all need to have service to the community, school, hospital, state and federal agencies, professional organizations, grant review panels, and others. Now the next item is also present in every focus on the non-tenure track and in the tenure track mentoring. We have to help our young faculty members. If we're a senior faculty member, part of what we should be evaluated on is our mentoring of junior faculty. We do it. We need to do it more. Everybody should be held to the to, accountable for mentoring their junior faculty. It's our responsibility. And the other aspect of this is everybody has to demonstrate professionalism. Regardless of who they are, you can be the greatest uh, physician scientist in the world, but you have to demonstrate professionalism. Otherwise, um, it's, a, it's not a particularly good trait, and, and, and you will be held accountable. All right, so that was the tenure track. To evaluate uh, people, a faculty on the non-tenure track, we take account of the fact that people have different foci of, of interest and, and they partake in different career foci. So we will go through them one at a time. Here is the teaching focus. Or somebody whose primary, primary focus is teaching and scholarship on teaching. So their scholarship is on teaching or in one's field. They need to have demonstrated scholarship in education in peer-reviewed publications. These faculty have to publish and demonstrate scholarship. This, is, this, this track requires, this focus requires scholarship. They can have peer-reviewed publications. They can have written textbooks or chapters in textbook, online, textbooks, online fora, and others. But they, they need to demonstrate that they are known for their scholarship and teaching. They have to have presentations at national and international meetings. They have participated in curriculum or course development. Uh, they could, they could uh, run courses. They could uh, design and, and write courses. And they have to have demonstrated, the word is demonstrated, excellence in teaching. Uh, these faculty can participate, uh, they, they can play roles as educational program administrators. And if, if they are healthcare delivery, if they're licensed to deliver healthcare, they uh, should demonstrate excellence in healthcare. They have to have service to the university, community, hospital, society, and others. And there are many more than I listed. They have to participate in mentoring. Senior faculty have to mentor junior faculty in every focus of their endeavor. That's, that's what we do. And they have to demonstrate professionalism. That's a sine qua non in every focus and every track. 
All right, so that was the teaching track, a teaching focus on the non-tenure track. So the next one I will descri describe is the, 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 the criteria for being evaluated on a mixed focus. We like to call this the hybrid focus. Uh, just to go back a moment, again, the every, every focus, the evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate to career focus and stage. So these are aspirational criteria. Junior faculty obviously have to be held to the level of a junior faculty and not that of a full professor. All right, so on the mixed or hybrid focus, uh, the, 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 the focus is on collaborative scholarship and reputation in healthcare and related fields. Collaborative implies that you don't necessarily write the protocol, you don't necessarily uh, uh, send, uh, submit it as senior author, but you participate. Your participation rises to the level of co-authorship. That's collaborative research. You participate in team research as a significant contributor or co-author, but not necessarily the leader. You publish peer-reviewed papers. You're invited to give lectures locally, nationally, and internationally. And your research time is funded extramurally. All research time is funded. All research time is funded, and, and, um, and your research time has to be funded extramurally. There's no intrinsic uh, support for research uh, uh, unless we, we bring in funds for it. If you're, health, if you're licensed to provide healthcare delivery, um, you should demonstrate excellence in healthcare delivery. Everybody demonstrates excellence in teaching. We all teach. If uh, this, is, this focus is where the administrators fit, people like the uh, uh, junior, uh, like uh, assistant deans and, and, and associate deans, and people who have administrative functions, fellowship program directors, uh, perhaps, um, who have administrative duties, they, 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 they fit into this focus. Uh, and so you have to have demonstrated excellence in administration if it's applicable. You have to demonstrate service to the university, community, hospital, society, state agencies, and others. And you have to mentor. We have to mentor our junior faculty. It's, it's, it's absolutely key. We, we owe it to our, to our colleagues. And you have to demonstrate professionalism. And once again, the evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate to career focus and stage. All right, so we're still on the non-tenure track, but now we're going to the clinical <laughs> practice focus. These are the people who whose primary focus is providing healthcare delivery. The main, main focus is healthcare delivery, and also they teach. They have to have demonstrated excellence in healthcare delivery, establish local, regional, and national reputation as healthcare providers. They have to have ba built a base for consultations, referrals, new, pro new programs, or specialized skills. They are the best healthcare providers that can be they, they apply their trade. They have to have demonstrated excellence in teaching. That's also important. They teach. Now, in this focus, scholarship is not required. If you're spending 90% of your time, let's say, in providing healthcare delivery, that, and you're teaching the rest of the 10% of the time, then in this, in this focus, you're not required to have scholarship. Uh, but you may participate in scholarship. You may enable scholarship if you have patients who qualify for clinical trials that other faculty members run who have scholarly programs. You should enable your patients or um, the facilities to be used for research. Identify ways of helping and enabling research by people who, who conduct them. You don't necessarily have to um, enroll patients. You don't, the, your research doesn't have to rise to the level of co-authorship or, or, or participation in the clinical trial, but you need to enable the research. That's all we ask. Uh, the uh, service to the university is important and, and, and is going to, you're going to be judged on it. Service to the community, hospital, society, state agencies, and others. Mentoring of junior faculty is key. Once again, and professionalism is absolutely a sine qua non. And once again, evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate to career focus and stage. 
The last focus within the non-tenure track is the purely research focus. This is a coterminous, focus, focus, a coterminous job. It's coterminous with funding from a source uh, that is not RBHS. It could be usually grant supported, but there are other sources that are finite period of time where this this uh, person's uh, job is coterminous with this source of funding. They participate in team research as a significant contributor, co-author, but not necessarily the leader. They usually work for somebody who is the leader of the research program. They have to have published peer-reviewed papers, not necessarily as first authors, but usually if you're, if you're writing somebody's research program. They should have been invited to give lectures locally, nationally, and internationally. And that actually does happen, because if you're the first author in a, in a series of publications, and you're known for this field, even though you're not the PI on the grant, and you're, it's not your lab, your name keeps coming up when the search of the field is, is, is uh, done. You get to be known, and you do get invited to give talks in other, other institutions and, and at meetings, et cetera. So, Absolutely does happen. Uh, your research time is funded extramurally, again, coterminous with a source of funding. And the investigator contributed to obtaining external research funding. That means they helped on grants, they provided data, they, they wrote parts of it perhaps, but not necessarily. They just uh, helped the PI put the grants together, but they're not required to put in grants themselves. Uh, the faculty member, this type of faculty member, effectively manages the research core or a clinical laboratory or an outreach program of funded programs. He or she introduces novel and technically demanding research technologies to a broad range of faculty, if applicable. This faculty member teaches or guides students, postdocs, or staff in a laboratory or the field setting. They don't necessarily have to give lectures in didactic courses. This is primarily the, the venue of their teaching. They, do sh they should provide mentoring to junior faculty in the same situation, and they have to demonstrate professionalism. It's, again, the evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate to career focus and stage. So, the sum in summary, uh, the evaluator assigns a percent effort to each category as relevant to the individual faculty member, uh, uh, designating it, uh, dividing it among teaching, research and scholarship, service and patient care, again, from the document as, as it's mandated now. The faculty, the evaluator assigns a score for each category and they sum scores by assigning points based on percent effort for each category. Success in the attainment of these goals is intended as initial guidelines for individual faculty evaluation. Again, so the scores don't necessarily weight. They don't, they don't, you can't average them. The, the, the evaluation for the entire document is not necessarily a, an average of all the four scores. So the evaluation should also take into consideration other applicable performance and productivity metrics. For example, in publications in peer-reviewed journals, study section memberships, editorships, patient quality and safety, and teaching awards. The selection of foci within tracks and the faculty goals and aspirations are key parts of the evaluation process. I'm saying it once again because it's so important. Evaluation should be based on expectations appropriate for career focus and stage. I said it over and over. These are aspirational goals. We judge faculty appropriate to their level. Uh, the standard evaluation terms are defined as follows. And these are the three areas, the, the three levels of, 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 um, of, of uh, evaluation within the existing document. It's exemplary satisfactory and unsatisfactory. The vast majority of faculty are satisfactory. Being a great faculty member, doing everything that you need to do makes you a satisfactory faculty member. Exemplary is a rating that's reserved for those who consistently excel in their overall job performance. It indicates that performance is well beyond that which can be expected from most faculty. Well beyond that. On the other hand, there is an unsatisfactory rating, and this rating is used when performance falls below an unacceptable level. 
performance may be acceptable in some respects. Again, you don't average it, but improvements are needed to bring the overall performance to the level expected. And this is actually an opportunity to communicate to the faculty member where they have to improve so that this does not happen again the following year that your performance moves up to, to, to satisfactory. And, and, and perhaps you need to take courses or partake in a sabbatical or do something that will allow you to train to move up to satisfactory, to how to improve uh, your, your, your uh, rating this year. For a meaningful evalu evaluation pro process, it is important to use the whole range of scoring. Written comments reflecting the quality of the work performance should be provided to each section and in each section of the evaluation. Communicate with the faculty member, write it down. They have to know what they need to do to improve what they're doing great and, and what needs improvement and how, what they should focus on. These comments should specifically address productivity as reflected in the faculty data form. Remember the fact the faculty member gives the, the uh, uh, evaluator a faculty data form up front so that the evaluator knows what the faculty has done in detail. Comments should specifically address goals and objectives for the area established in the previous year's evaluation. I haven't counted how many times I've said this, but it must be above eight at this point. It's really important to define your, your goals for the following year. You have to establish goals for the next evaluation period, including long-term goals. And this is also important because you need to know where you're going. Otherwise, you don't know how to get there. That's from uh, Alice in Wonderland, I believe. Uh, particularly those relating to career development issues for junior faculty. And also, it is important to use this session to review faculty development issues pertaining to the individual's, individual faculty member. As I, as I open this, this, this talk, the evaluation process is an opportunity to enhance faculty development. We have a mentoring committee that we put together to work with the existing mentoring committees that, that are really excellent at some of the schools. We need to develop our faculty. This is one opportunity that we have that we should take advantage of. For junior faculty members, it is a set, and again, the document says it. For junior faculty members, it is essential to discuss progress towards promotion, steps that should be taken to qualify for promotion, additional credentials, training that would be useful for career advancement, and other related matters. Um, I guess I can give you an anecdote. When I was chair of FCAP, we used to have talks information talks for clinical faculty and for basic faculty. And frequently, faculty did not know what track they were on. This is an opportunity every year to develop the faculty, to ex tell them the expectations, to, to guide them on how to, how to succeed and what is required. Thank you.